Hi friends. So today I thought, uh, based on a request from one of you, that I would be painting these fun fox gloves. Um, I was trying to find a picture of some and had a little bit, I know somebody did email me some, um, but they're really kind of fun. I They remind me of Snapdragons. Um, I painted a practice one right here, and they, they kind of remind me a little bit of the Snapdragons as far as the greenery and some things like that. Uh, they are this beautiful bell shape, and they have this circle and opening at the end of them. So let's start with creating our swatch for this. So let me get a piece of paper here, and we will just play with that swatch. So I'm going to be using, uh, the ones I'm seeing are like a purplish, um, kind of this Quinn magenta color that I love. They're like a combination of that and kind of a purplish color. So I'm gonna use both. Um, as I always say, you know, let's start with a light version of that and then darken it. So here's this. So you see that dark and light and then the purple I think will be really pretty with it. I'm using a funky paper here. I don't know if you can see that. So here is this dark color, then I add some more water and it'll get a little bit lighter. Um, my greens will be my standard sap green, olive green, uh, maybe a little bit of yellow mixed in with that. I think could be pretty to kind of get this limey type of green. Um, and maybe a bit of the gold green that I'm really loving lately to mix with that and for some of the darker areas in there that I might want to do. So I think that could be really pretty together. Okay, so those will be kind of the color palette here have a little bit of this gold. Um, that is the cad yellow. Here's some gold next to that that maybe we can mix together for some of the highlights. I think that could be pretty. Okay, and then I also will play with some of the Let's use this to do some of those brush strokes. So as always, we have these thin brush strokes and I am using today um, my 140 pound, my Windsor Newton 8, I'm sorry, Princeton number eight round. This is the Velvet Touch. And for the branches and twigs and stems, we're going from this light, just using the tip of my brush to make these light areas, which will be inside here, in between the branches, you want a very light tip. Then for some of the thicker stems, I'm going to use a little bit more pressure and create a little bit thicker, okay? The other thing I've been doing lately is, so we've learned our C strokes, and that's the tip, pressure, come around. So that's a C stroke. If you combine a left and a right C stroke, you can create these beautiful leaves. And you can create long leaves, press, or short ones. This is a long one, okay. And you know, really, Lately, I've been using a little bit of the side of my brush to make some of these, just plain. So tip of my brush, going into the side of my brush, really pushing into it and getting kind of these, I've been enjoying these different shaped little leaves. 
So that's been a lot of fun. So practice some of those. Tip, side of your brush, push, and then back to the tip again. You could even come around the other side. And it makes these kind of fun, fat leaves. Now I noticed in these foxgloves, they actually have more of a kind of long, thin leaf. So I will probably stick with the thin, thick, that type of leaf. And I, I noticed some of them kind of thin, thick, and came down like this. So that might be a fun little leaf to work with. And then at the top of the plant, they have this kind of these little green pieces sticking out. So that's what I'm going to start with. I don't know if you can see that, but they kind of have these little green pieces. So I'm going to do those by just dabbing, kind of like this. And then I will add those throughout my painting as well. With that, I might combine a little bit of the pink, something like that. So these are all little dabs. And then as we get to the actual flowers, I'm going to use the point of my brush and work into the tip. So point, side of my brush, like that because I noticed these little fox gloves are in the shape of kind of a teardrop point press, okay? Kind of like that. So I think that'll be a fun shape to practice. Point, press, something like that. And then when they dry, what we'll do is go in and darken the ends of them because they do have this little circle towards the end. So that's the shape I'm going to be dealing with. Let's practice that again. So let me go with a purple because that's a little bit darker and easier to see. So for these little fox gloves, point and then press into your side of your brush. Point, press, okay, something like that. And then we'll come back and, you know, add in the little centers that come out at the bottom. It's kind of like a cone shape, and then they have this, kind of this opening in the end. So point, press, kind of like this, okay? So that's the shape that we're going to do. You could kind of lengthen that out a little bit if you want. Point, press, something like that. Always leaving these little white spaces white spaces for interest, okay? Point, press, like that. And then we will go back in and add some of the circles near the bottom. But practice, if you come back to this video and rewatch it, save it, um, practice these little teardrop shapes. Point, press, point, press, point, press, using the side of your brush. Okay, to get these little teardrops. That's how I'm going to do it. Um, that's what I see when I look at these little fox gloves. And then working back into it later, with, you know, we can kind of go in with these little circles to kind of accentuate that opening at the bottom. I think it'll be fun. However you want to do that, you can do just these little circles, like so. Okay, so we're going to make this as simple as possible and fun and doable for you. So those are the basic shapes. I will be using wet in wet. Of course, my first layers will be wet on dry, um, wet paint onto dry uh, paper. But as I go into these, I will be using some wet on wet. So I'll be tapping into some of these just to create some pretty blends of color. Something like that. This is a beautiful blending, an example of wet on wet, kind of combining the green with the um, Quinn Magenta and you get this beautiful 
uh, mixing and blending here. So this is um, the sample sheet that I will include in the $25 tutorial kit. Uh, you will also get my color swatch and I will write on here some directions. Um, you know, this is the tip of your brush, holding your brush like this to get that light tip and then a little bit more pressure for the little bit thicker stroke um, using the point in the side of your brush. I will write all of this down. I will label all of these colors I'm using for you. And then you will also get the tutorial that I'm going to, the, the end piece that I'm going to paint for you right now. So today I'm using this, it's Stonehenge um, Aqua Cold Press. It's made by Legion. I've really enjoyed this paper. It's not one I normally buy because it's a little bit more pricey. Um, but I got it for a Christmas present, so thank you to my daughter. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is kind of what we're doing. Um, these little fox gloves, I added a little B. They have kind of these longer type of leaves um, and some green in between and the bell shapes that come out. So let's grab our brushes. Again, my round velvet touch, number eight Princeton. And let's get started. So I'm going to start with painting this long stalk that you see on them. I've also got my two containers of water. So I've got my container to wash my brush in and then my container to rinse. I've also got my paper towel here to dab off any excess water um, and my palette here with my paint. So this is the sap and the olive green, which I'm running a little low on. I need to reorder some of that. I'm dabbing off just a little bit so I'm not fully loaded. And let's just start with this first one here. So. I'm going to actually start at the top and by just dabbing in some of these, some of this greenery. And that's all I'm gonna do for that right now, okay? I could go in here and maybe draw the branch, the stem. So I think I will do that and I will Combine my olive and sap green with a little bit of brown. And let's just go in and kind of draw some little stems, something like that. We'll get into more of these leaves as we go. So let's just leave that right there. Um, so let's go in and now pick up our Quinn Magenta or whatever pink you use. You can use a pink or a purple. And I'm going to just tap off a tiny bit. And then let's go in and start drawing these beautiful little bells. So I'm gonna add some in here while this is wet so it blends. So let's just do that first. Okay, so we've got that beautiful blending and I'm just kind of doing these little swishes. Now let's go in and start drawing our bells. So I noticed the blossoms at the top are smaller and they get a little bit wider and bigger as you go down. So let's just take the tip of our brush and start making these little trumpet shaped point press teardrop shapes. Don't, not getting too fussy about these. I'm just really, you could even go upwards, so thick to thin, something like that. Point, press, point, press. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit more paint on my brush and start dabbing into these while they're wet. So I get this 
beautiful blend. Now I'm going to stop right there and go in and add some green while this is wet. So I've got green on my brush and I'm going to add these little stems just like that. Now back into more of my Quin Magenta. Point press, point press, point press. And notice they kind of flare out a little bit. Press point, you can go backwards too. Point press. So again, creating these little point press, point press, like so. Now I'm gonna go into these and drop some purple. So just a tad bit of purple, be careful, purple can be strong. And going in and tapping into these, just like so, just to create some interest. Okay, so now you're getting this these beautiful colors. I'm going to go in and add some green. Don't get too perfectionist with this, just have fun. And so point, press, like this. You might even have some leaves that are coming out in here. Something like that. Pressing down, okay. And I'm going to draw a few more of these little flowers, not draw, paint. Point, press, point, press, point, press. Just going in and adding them with a variety of pigment. If you want some to stand out, you could use a little bit more pigment, something like that. Now, as these dry, I will go in because these little foxglove have this opening at the end. So I'm going to add that in here. And I'm going to use a little bit more color. And let's just draw some little circles at the bottom, kind of like this. So we're just depicting, we're giving the feel that these are open on the bottom because these little foxgloves are open. So just doing these little half circles and it gives you that feeling that they're opened up. Now I'm gonna go back in again while it's wet and use some of that green. I'm gonna just tip off a little bit of that and draw some little stems coming to these, okay? And some leaves, point press, point press. You can have these little leaves coming out. And in between the flowers, just filling in some of these little areas like so. Let's do maybe a couple very faint and light purple flowers in there. Point press, point press, point press, point press, point press. Point press. And some of these little shapes like such. Now I'm going to go back. So I'm going back and forth between the green, the green paint for my leaves and the purple. I like working both while this is wet. So let's do a couple more leaves. Point, press, point, press. Now I'm trying here to vary my color a little bit. So maybe let's do a really dark, some darker leaves, which just means I'm going to use less water. I might pick up a little bit of this gold brown color here to darken it up, or I could even go into this. 
and darken up my green a bit. And let's create a couple of these leaves just to give it some more variety. Something like this, kind of poking out. Let's go into this one and darken that up a bit. Okay. Going to go in, just putting in a few stems here and there. Let's darken this leaf up. So with watercolors, you can always paint with layers. So I've already done these stems, but now I'm going in with a little bit darker layer to those. Point, press, so see that? Point, press, okay. Point, press. So that, that creates some interest in there. Okay, and then going into these little bell shapes and adding in some of those little circles again at the bottom. Because they have these openings in them. Like so. Just kind of drawing in these little C shapes. You could even do some with the full circle. Using the tip, very light touch. So see here what we've got? Isn't that lovely? Now I thought it might be fun to do a little B here, just for some interest. So I did a B tutorial about a week ago or so. So let's get some of that yellow. And we're going to go in and let's just do a little B. So a B has kind of this crescent shape. So let's dab here and then the middle of his little body, his little B body. And he's kind of in this curve, okay? Now, we wanna let that dry a bit because if I go into that right now with my Payne's Gray, which is the version of black that I like, it has a little bit of a blue tint to it, it's going to spread all over and get pretty crazy. So I don't wanna quite go into that um, right yet. I want to let that dry a little bit. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we could play with these a little bit more. I don't want to do too much, but maybe just look at that. Isn't that a pretty color? That's Quinn Magenta and Violet Purple. I think that's really, really pretty. And let's just kind of dab into some areas in here. Okay, kind of like that. Not pretty. Now, I'm not normally much of a detail person, but I think you could have fun with this if you are. So just adding in some little dark touches. Okay. Like that. Just touching them. You know, you've got this little round bell shape at the end of these like so, you could add in, just like that. Okay, so let's go back to our little bee, see how he's doing. I'm going to put a, some of that Payne's Gray. If you have black, that's fine. But what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna try and get my brush, some of that water out, because I don't wanna touch this and it just turns into a big blob. So see how that black is kind of taking over? So I'm dabbing in between the yellow and the black. Now what I'm going to do for the wings, if you watched my tutorial, is I take rinse my brush and I dab some of the extra water off or at least scrape it on the side of my water. And then for the little wings, I take a, just water on my brush. 
and their wings come out of about the second part of their body. So I'm going to barely touch and then drag out to make that wing because they're kind of transparent. Point and drag. So I've got these two little wings coming out. Now those came out with a little bit more color than I really like. So I can wipe off my brush and pick some of that color up. Okay. I'm going to use the very tip of my brush. And friends, this is why it's so important to protect the tips of your brush and not leave them in your water point down because they come in really handy. So we're going to draw his little legs just with the tip like this. And then maybe just the tip of his head has some black in it. And there's our little bee. I think he's adorable. And it kind of gives a little bit of whimsy to your painting. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you know, play with it. You can always add in more little flowers, um, different little leaves. It's really, you know, what I am about these days is make it what you feel. If, if you like more little green branches, then do that. Make this your painting, however that might look to you. What I saw in these was this bell shape. So that's what I did with the opening at the bottom. Now you could definitely, another little piece you could do in here is you could go back in there when this is dry with some black. In this case, Payne's Gray is what I use. And just getting a tiny bit of the water off. And you could go back in and maybe even put some little tiny dots using the tip of your brush. If you wanted, I think it's perfectly fine how it is. So that might add in a little bit of detail. I think actually these dots in the flower themselves, I went to my local market and they didn't have any. Uh, the little dots are more of a purple, but that's okay. So I'm just going into the little circles at the end and I'm just dotting in a few little stamens here like that. So it gives a little bit of um, detail, a little bit of interest. Make sure you are also varying the value of these different um, flowers. So when I say that, what I mean is the value is how much paint you have to water ratio. So for a darker value, you're going to want more paint versus water. And that's how I got some of these darker colors. But you start with just a light value and then you go in and you can kind of add in some of the darker values. You always work from light to dark in watercolors because you can't go backwards. In my little leaves here, um, I went from light to these darker values, which kind of made these leaves pop out. Um, I just dabbed in some of these working while it was wet i went in and put some of that quin magenta so you get this beautiful blending of the purple and the green and you know at the end here i just added in some little dots that's up to you if you want that detail and i added in our little b here um, that's of course optional you don't have to do that but I thought it was quite fun. And so I hope that was good for you. Um, I will put this on my Etsy. You will get um, the painting. You'll get the swatch and I will label the Windsor Newton colors. I will also label the strokes, the brush strokes that I used in this painting. And hopefully that'll be a good resource for you 
and um, if you have any questions, you know, just ask. I have my free little ebook, um, which has some of these things in it. I'm so glad you're here with me. Um, I am new here to YouTube, and I'm hoping to bring you value. I love what you guys are requesting. It's a lot of fun. And happy painting. And please let me know if you have any questions uh, that you or, or things you would like me to paint or do a video on. And I'm happy to do as much as I can for you guys. And most of all, just enjoy this process. Always find something wonderful and beautiful about what you created. And um, just enjoy it. Okay. Thank you so much for being with me, everybody. We'll see you soon.